Hey everyone, Matt from OnGuard, and I'm getting ready to do this video analysis of a classic sequence between Fabrizio Verdum and Vinnie Magalhaes from ADCC. This is in the 99 kilogram weight class final, as you can see. Uh, both these guys, ADCC champions in the past, and uh, uh, UFC veterans, been around MMA for a while, and uh, IBJJF world champions as well, Megalesh and Nogi and Verdum and the Gi. So, I mean, definitely two legends of the sport. This is a arm bar that Vinny got caught in, and I want to look at why it didn't work. So here we got Fabricio getting on the back. And uh, in this, it's kind of hard to see from this angle. This is a tough spot. Because in this situation, as you can see, there's a there's going to be a triangle dilemma here. So because Verdum has his uh, Fabricio, uh, sorry, Verdum has Vinny's arm trapped. He's already created a one in one out situation, right? So rear triangle is a huge issue with this arm trapped. It's quite a dilemma being stuck there. Again, I'm I'm nowhere near the caliber of these guys, but I am going to offer criticism because that's why I'm doing this. So. I think that Vinny should be uh, framing the top leg with his hands and trying to bridge heavily over the bottom leg, which would prevent Fabricio from getting the arm bar. He'd probably give up bottom mount position, but hopefully by framing the inside of Verdun's knee here, he would begin a, like a kipping escape or a knee elbow escape. So you can see because this ar this foot is coming across, Vinny is stuck, right? He can't, he can't seem to escape and hop over that leg. Although if he could hop over this foot, the whole attack system falls apart. So now Verdum has locked his legs in a trap triangle position. So Vinny's very, very much concerned about triangles right now, I'm sure. But we can't forget that his arm is just sticking out here. Let's see what happens. This is one of the tightest, longest arm bars we've probably ever seen in jiu-jitsu. So now... Uh, Whoa, there goes my cat. So now Verdum switches to a Kimura control, right? The thing about the Kimura control is it's because of the internal rotation of the shoulder, Vinny has no ability to hitchhike or escape. And all, all of his escapes become very, very difficult here because of the internal rotation of his shoulder. So this Kimura control allows Verdum to make a seamless transition to go from a triangle into a cross face leg. So he throws his leg over top. I'm not sure the score of the match at this point, but generally I always like to recommend going into triangles over arm bars. But for whatever reason, Verdum thought, let's go arm bar. Now he's starting to really lock on the, the arm bar, okay? So the way he's got his feet configured, he's got a full juji, but his feet are both under the armpit, which opens up some submission attacks, but also leaves uh, very little control over Vinny's head. Now he's trying to finish this, right? So it, it, Vinny's doing a very interesting thing here. He's looking the complete other direction. And why would he do that? He's going to be in this position for a long time. But basically what that does is it takes his uh, left shoulder, the, you know, Verdum's attach attacking his left arm here. It takes his left shoulder, which it would be here somewhere, and it elevates the shoulder. So when you elevate your shoulder, it now requires Verdum to create a higher fulcrum in order to create breaking pressure. So by turning away from the arm bar, you actually elevate your shoulder. And that will, again, uh, require a higher fulcrum to finish. More, more words on the fulcrum in a moment. Let's see where this goes. So again, you can see Vinny turning away, which is giving him some breathing room. Now let's just look. You can also, if you pay attention to Vinny's hand, you'll see him constantly rotating his thumb left and right. Okay, so you might be wondering, like, why isn't Verdum getting a finish here? Aside from what we already assessed, the shoulder is higher than normal. Okay, if, Verdum, if Vinny was lying flat on his back, there'd probably be enough power to break. But there's uh, a crucial error that, that Verdum is making here. First of all, I think it's smarter to grab his left hand to grab the pad of the thumb as opposed to just the wrist, because you'll just get more control over the rotation of the lever if you grab the pad of the thumb. 
Okay, the other thing that's happening here, Verdum is attacking Vinny's left arm. The ideal fulcrum to break this arm is not down the middle and it's not on the right hip, but it's rather Verdum's left hip. So Verdum really actually wants to bring Vinny's hand to his left shoulder. And that way his left elbow will go to his left hip, which is the fulcrum. We want to avoid trying to break, break arms, break. Yeah. We want to try to avoid breaking our partner's arm over the, uh, the wrong hip and also down the middle. I'm not going to say it can't work going down the middle, but you can also kind of crush your, uh, balls there. And it's just, a inherently a softer fulcrum and it's going to be less powerful when it comes to actually breaking someone's arm. You can hurt someone, no doubt you can pop their arm, but we're trying to actually break someone's arm. So if you watch how Verdum, he's now here and he's kind of thinking like, why can't I finish this? If you watch how he's breaking, he should be turning Vinny's thumb up or at least in the same direction as the hyperextension and breaking the arm to this side, pulling straight down the middle and also onto this side is going to be pretty ineffective, especially against a guy like Vinny, who's notorious for escaping submissions. And this is the finals of the ADCC, so he'd probably let his arm pop pretty good. So he's trying to he's trying to rotate the thumb so that it faces up. You can see him try to do that, but can he get Vinny's elbow? Now he's breaking it over the wrong hip again. You see, that's the side where the hitchhiker escape is on is on the wrong side. So he really want there we go. So we really need the Vinny's knuckles to be going to this side. Sorry, not knuckles, but just hand and the thumb to be pointing in the opposite direction, the same direction as the hyperextension. You can see the axis of the armbar that Verdum is trying to get. He's pulling the arm down the middle and sometimes even going over the right hip. The rule is right on right on right, or in this case, left on left on left, break the left arm over your left hip, bring the left hand over your left shoulder. It's a really important detail. I learned from watching John Danaher videos and it's very much uh, it could have possibly finished this match. Another thing is when you watch this, this is not necessarily the arm popping, although it is, it does look like it's taking some damage because the thumb is pointing up, but the fulcrum is essentially Verdum's junk. Okay. Which is, I'm sure it hurts, but to really break that arm, we're going to need to punch it around the corner in this position. Right. And again, Vinny doing a fantastic job of just, defending this position. I would also recommend that, Ver, that uh, I would recommend Verdum switches his hands. So his left hand should be the one that's grabbing the pad of the thumb on, on top. And then ideally the right hand is the one that's grabbing the wrist. But maybe he's like, if I let go of this grip, then he's going to slip out. So I can't switch my grips right now. I just have to like try and make him tap right here. Right. And you can see, look, Vinny's turning completely the other direction and that's creating a huge amount of height so just by being sideways on his shoulder, on his right shoulder, his left shoulder becomes extremely elevated, which uh, denies a lot of breaking power for Verdum. All right. And ideally, like Verdum's using a method where he's pulling two hands down and lifting his hips up. So he's he's got opposing forces here where his hands are pulling down and his hips are going up. But the problem is he's bridging against the floor. And now he's essentially maxed out his bridge. He's, he's bridging as hard as he can. His hips can't really go any higher than this. Vinny's still not tapping. Okay. So in, in situations like this, you kind of need to modify your grip and create a magnum arm bar where you grab the hand and punch it down over the left hip, left on left on left. And instead of relying on two hands bridging, you're relying on a bench press movement where you're driving the hand in the, now around the corner. And that way the break will not be limited by the ground wedging behind Verdum's head and back. And Vinny's just like holding on for dear life, but finding enough room to just prevent his arm from breaking. So you can see it's not down this side here, a magnum arm bar like, or a bench press arm bar as some might call it, uh, would, would potentially solve this issue. You can see Vinny too, like he's turning, he's turning his thumb down. That looks tight and it looks like it hurts, but to actually generate the breaking power, it's just not breaking the arm. And I'm by criticizing it, I'm not at all saying, first of all, I'm not saying I could do better, 
And second of all, I'm not saying it doesn't hurt. I'm sure this hurts. I'm sure Vinny is, uh, you know, that Vinny's a guy who's known for basically crapping on leg locks and saying they don't work. So he's one of the more flexible guys. His joints can absorb a lot of pressure. So look, if you just look here, you can see how tall Vinny's uh, shoulder line is. His shoulders are completely, uh, you know, perpendicular to the floor. And he's got like the whole span of his shoulders. And this is the line of the, uh, of where the fulcrum is. So if we just look right now, this is the shoulder. Ideally, that shoulder needs to be way lower. If Vinny was lying on his back, the sh his shoulder would probably be around here, right? Or maybe even lower, maybe here. And with Fabricio bridging up in the air, he has to now get up and over this line. So he's bridging his hips up as hard as he can, but he can't get higher than that line just by Magalesh turning on his side. Now, if he switched to a Magnum arm bar, he could potentially break that arm in half, but he's not doing that, okay? Also notice the configuration. Fabricio is locking his feet here, which creates a lot of great breaking power and a lot of great control over the far shoulder. And Vinny is just trying to find the enough room to survive here, right? Also, Vinny controlling this cross face arm. So he's probably thinking about uh, maybe e either uh, like bridging over that arm or possibly stacking if he can. But he knows if he does, if he turns into the arm bar, it's going to come pouring on because right now he's finding a lot of wiggle room because his shoulder is so high off the floor and he's on his side. So he's got to be super careful how he navigates from here. Again, Verdum trying to break the arm over the wrong hip. Trying to break the arm over the wrong hip. He needs to go to his left hip. And then Vinny slides out and the crowd goes crazy. So what a sequence. I mean, if you notice what happens here, Verdun, Verdun actually does something. He does something that uh, Danaher kind of recommends when you're trying to break someone's arm here. If you watch his left foot, he tries to take his left knee and raise it. What that does is it will activate his left hip and raise his left hip as a strong fulcrum. And now if he were to, if, if he does that, let's just watch it right before Vinny escapes. So here you're going to see Verdum is there. So see this, but, but he's not really using it the way he want to. You don't necessarily want your legs splayed wide open. And right now uh, Verdum's wedges are pretty low, uh, pretty weak. Okay, because it's like there's such a big space between his knees. He doesn't have his ankles crossed and Vinny's going to escape right away. But if Verdum did this, he pinched his knees and then he did again, did that magnum arm bar where he breaks the, uh, the arm over the left hip. You'd probably have some success. And there's a huge turn from Vinny committing to uh, basically just pulling his elbow out. I mean, it's not even like a hitchhiker or anything. You just... <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good, that's good. So now he's just going to turn out and just drive his elbow as hard as he can into the floor and it's gone. You got to keep in mind, these guys are slippery. They're some of the best grapplers in the world. This is the ADCC finals. You know, I've seen Vinny Magalesh fight Craig Jones and he was in a heel hook and he just let his leg break and then had to tap out after. So uh, really incredible. If you watch some of these old ADCCs from the uh, early 2000s or around 2010-ish area, there's some really great matches, lots of good stuff to study. And it's amazing to see um, even today how much better these, uh, how much better the competitors are than they were, they would be back then. I would at least make that argument, you know, just from the sheer knowledge that we have. But what a match. And uh, unfortunately, or fortunately, however you look at it, Verdum just not able to find that, that break, okay? And this is another reason why I tend to think that triangles are a better transition uh, or a better system to make rather than arm bars if you can because there's a wedge behind your partner's head. So if Verdum would have stuck with this triangle, this triangle here, Right, this would have been, uh, I think, a smaller, uh, stronger attack vector. He could have still done the armbar, but he would have had more control over Magalesh's head. 
you might also be looking at this if you like rear triangles you might be wondering like well how how could uh Verdum have gone to a rear triangle here because the angle is off right if we look at Magales's body his spine is in this line and Verdum is kind of almost on a perpendicular line which is not really what we want when we do a rear triangle ideally our spines are running kind of in the same line and Verdum's head would be positioned probably over Vinny's head at least that's how I like to do it okay so how can how could he have gone to that first of all I would have gone right to a Kimura control which is what Verdum does he's here he's going to try and transition to a Kimura where is it okay here comes the Kimura right so if you have the Kimura you can you can use your legs in a uh, weightless way so you can like shift your legs around and it's safe because your Kimura will control your partner if you're just scooping their arm with your arm quite often they can spin out if you start moving your legs around right so if Verdum were to take his uh, left shoelaces and hook it on the outside of, of Vinny's hip and then lean his head over Vinny's head, he'd find himself in a position in a straight line and he could easily pull the elbow high and go into a, a reverse triangle, which I think would have been a stronger attack. Again, it's the heat of battle and you can't really just, you know, you can't just do <laughs> these guys are some of the best guys in the world. So it's easy for me to sit in my chair and say that, but. You know, at this case, he w chose to go for a Juji Gatame. And just unfortunately for him, couldn't break the arm over the hip. So again, he's see how he's breaking it over the wrong hip? He needs to break it over this hip. That's why uh, I really recommend looking at the bench press or the magnum arm bar, as it's called, because it doesn't rely on your hips bridging, because your hips bridging can be limited by the ground behind you as a wedge. Instead, it would be a bench press around this hip. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed that breakdown. It was awesome, and uh, see you next time.